Hey everyone, welcome back to Living Electric. Uh, I'm going to do my best to do an intro today. Uh, Alex is not on the show, and uh, as Alex and I joke a lot, um, I tend to be really bad with intros. <laughs> so hopefully this one isn't too rough for today's episode since I am hosting on my own. But we are here with our special guest, Brian Reby. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Brian is a uh, fellow content creator, uh, as well as an EV educator and enthusiast. So we're excited to have you here today. Thank you very much. Excited to be on here. Yeah. Well, Brian, do you mind uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, kind of what you're doing right now in the EV space? Sure. Well, I kind of got into, I've always been you know, fascinated with EVs. Um, back in the 90s when the EV1 was out, I was like, it's happening. It's going to be so cool. And then we know how that got tr yeah, crushed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, when I was a kid, I went to Disney World. And, you know, you go to Tomorrowland and you see the vision of the future. And we're all going to be in, you know, flying cars and technology is going to be amazing and change the world. And it felt like as I grew up, none of that was really happening. And then when we saw the EV1, I was like, all right, yeah, like I said, it's happening. And then they crushed that. Okay, I guess it's not happening. <laughs> and uh, we kind of went from that to hearing about Tesla. Um, I didn't really follow the stuff very close, um, but I had friends who would kind of say, oh, have you heard about this? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I'll never be able to afford that. And went to, uh, in 2018, went to a, a friend's father's funeral of all places. And as I pulled up to the, uh, the mortuary, uh, the, there was a red Model 3, or no, silver. Sorry, he's got a silver, oh, a silver oh. Model 3 there. And I'm like, who do I know that can afford a Tesla? Because yeah. when you don't know what the Model 3 is, you assume 100,000, couple hundred mm -hmm. thousand. Yeah. And um, it was actually uh, my classmate whose father had passed. I was like, oh, I don't want to say anything, but I really want to know, you know, this is not the time or the place. <laughs> um, but like all new EV owners, he was really excited to talk about it. And obviously was a good other subject to discuss. Yeah. Um, so before he left town again, then I got a test drive and I'm like, okay, I have to find my way into one of these for sure. Um, so by the end of 2018, by August, I think uh, we had decided to pick up a used Model S, a 2015 uh, 85D, and absolutely loved it. You know, we kind of did the Tesla stretch to to be able to afford it. Um, and I wasn't going to start a YouTube channel. You know, well. I had a YouTube channel. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but I wasn't going to do EV stuff on YouTube because it seemed like everybody gets a Tesla, they get a YouTube channel and, you know, yeah. the ball just rolls. It's like a requirement. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't need to do that. There's plenty of people doing a really great job out there, you know, doing this kind of stuff. And I've always loved a road trip. Back in the, the ice car days, my brothers and I would road trip all around the country. And that was kind of why we went with Tesla as because especially in 2018, you know, the supercharger network wasn't even across North Dakota yet. You know, you, you still had to pick some pretty specific routes, but you know, you could go places. And uh, that fall, my brother and I decided that we should see if this thing can road trip. And so we drove down to Pikes Peak and then we're like, oh, let's see if we can go up Pikes Peak because, you know, we didn't know anything about charging or, you know, you'd get there with plenty and then get tons of regen all the way down and it was no problem. And of course we felt stupid afterwards. Like, yeah, of course this worked. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when I was watching all the videos and everything, all these other content creators, um, I noticed a lot of them were on the West Coast, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I watched a lot of Zach and Jesse who do uh, Tesla Time News every week. And they're in Boston or near Boston. And on their channel, they have supercharger reviews. And so prepping for this Colorado trip, I was like, well, I'm going to watch all the supercharger reviews to know what to expect. 
And in Minnesota, there was one. <laughs> Nothing across the Dakotas. Uh, even into northern Colorado, you know, uh, there's a one stop in Wyoming too, and there was nothing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nobody's like, nobody knows there's a whole bunch of EV drivers in the upper Midwest. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to be that guy that starts doing YouTube, <laughs> but like, I want to at least do these like supercharger reviews, like one, two minute. Yeah, I've got a camera. Uh, I was doing uh, full-time video editing and um, uh, graphics and stuff like that at the time. So I'm like, I've got the gear. I'll just do it, cover these. And then one thing led to another. And I'm like, well, if I'm talking to my friends and family about it, you know, maybe other people want to know that you can drive an EV in Minnesota and you can road trip with it. So yeah. That was a very long-winded way of how I kind of got rolling, and now we're a few years later and still doing road trips, trying to cover other brands as well. This Sunday, I've got a video about um, a test drive of the Polestar 2 and the XC40 Recharge from Volvo. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, I'm not a big channel. And I don't have a ton of access to a lot of things. So most of my videos do end up being about, you know, testing the Tesla, you know, testing FSD, all that kind of stuff. Um, But when I can, I do like to interview other owners of other EV brands and, you know, test other ones out for myself. (laughs) Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, (laughs) no worries. You know, I I will say that that's one thing that I think is important, you know, is to highlight the the Midwest. And, you know, I I always consider like Ohio is like the Midwest. So like Minnesota, I know that's like directly in, you know, the center of the U.S. Um, You know, for a non-Tesla driver like myself and keeping an eye on like how Electrify America is spreading throughout South Dakota and Wyoming um, and, you know, more of the, the Central Americas. Um, I think it's important to highlight that because I agree with you. It, it seems like the populations of EV owners, at least back in like 2017, 2018, were mainly focused on each coast. And it's really cool to see how it's um, starting to bleed into the middle of the United States and to see specifically superchargers spreading the way they are every single day. It's uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's fantastic. It's already so much easier than it was just in 2018. Mm-hmm. You know, now I, I don't do, I, I do a ton of planning for the sake of the channel, yeah. but if I'm just going somewhere, I plug it into the nav and don't worry about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you just go places. Um, and that's getting better for, uh, CCS in Minnesota. We're still behind the Dakotas, you know, s- still need some help. Um, yeah. but it's getting there and they've got plans to, to grow that way. So, yeah. um, we're seeing more. Um, I'm, I'm in both the Minnesota Tesla owners group and the Minnesota EV owners group. And so we're starting to see more people than just Tesla owners start to do these big road trips and share their experience of, you know, it was fantastic. We drove down to Arizona and we charged here and here and, you know, had a dicey moment here, but then we did this, you know, so, you know, just hearing that stuff and, and that's part of it too, is, you know, you hear that locally, I'm sure in, in Ohio, it's the same way yeah. you hear that locally, you know, there's all these people doing these amazing trips, having these great EV experiences. And you just want to share that with the world or friends and family, like, Hey, Hey everybody, this will work. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, and I think that's important to do, you know, there's still, we talk about it all the time on living electric, the misconceptions about electric vehicles and just the daily fear that a lot of drivers, you know, they, they feel around electric cars, like, can they do those road trips that they they've been able to. And, you know, the truth of the matter is yes, it does take a little bit of planning, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's possible. You can do that. Um, so it's always, it's funny. Um, you know, I work, when I worked at Tesla back in 2015, when the supercharger network was growing, we would have owners come in all the time. And it was almost like uh, battle stories in a way. They would come in and they would share their their road trip, you know, examples. Like if a supercharger was down, if maybe they ran out of charge, what happened there? And um, you, you don't hear, 
you know, like you hear stories like that from time to time now, like running out of charge, but it's mm -hmm. very far and few between, um, which is, is it's cool to see how far the infrastructure has come. Yeah, definitely. I, and I've had a few got there with less than zero experiences. <laughs> um, but, you know, once you do that a couple times, you kind of know what you're in for, how much you mm -hmm. need to slow down. Yeah. Um, we had a, we had a bad uh, case. I, I now own a mo Model Y. Uh, we we got a Model Y in uh, March of last year, but the, our last road trip in the Model S was up to uh, Williston, North Dakota, which I'm sure most people don't know where that is, but it's <laughs> up near the border, and there's no supercharger up there. There's a, a couple. Uh, there's a Chatamo station and a couple uh, J1772. Um, outlets up there and um we left thinking yeah we we charged up enough right yeah, yeah. well we got to get moving anyway let's just go <laughs> and we had a very slow last 30 miles to get back to dickinson <laughs> and uh we were well under zero by then but we did <laughs> make it so hey, that's good that's good and, yeah. and you're here now so i mean it's yeah. a clear sign that yeah you, you did the whole trip <laughs> yeah. I, I i will say i've been in that position too where i i had an out-of-town trip i needed to do in our chevy bolt and for whatever reason that you know the abc always be charging is kind of like that statement out there and i i didn't do that i was like oh, i'll make it to columbus from cleveland okay and yeah, I, I think I left the house at like 60% and I rolled into um, about an, an hour and a half south. I needed to charge like immediately. <laughs> so yeah. it happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, if, if you're comfortable doing that within reason, then I think mm -hmm. it's, you know, kind of a good experience to kind of understand where the bottom really is. Um, you know, if you have the stomach for it. Yes. I know some people who don't go below 20 and that's fine. Yep. Yeah. I, I have my comfort zone too. My husband makes fun of me all the time because, you know, with, with all the education efforts that I put into about EVs, my comfort zone is 10% and he's taken our ID four to 0%. <laughs> and, and I'm not, I'm not to that point yet. <laughs> I like to, I like to have that safety net. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always plan for 10% and it's <laughs> just a matter of, do we actually get there with that? But. <laughs> Yeah, that's where, like I said, you need to maybe slow down a little bit or, mm -hmm. you know, find ways around that. Yep, exactly. So, you know, um, at the beginning of the conversation, you were talking about the EV1 and like going to like Disney World. Is there any transition vehicles that you like found yourself before your Model S driving, like any hybrids or? Yeah, so actually we still have a 2008 Prius. Oh, okay. And at the time, I mean, the Prius isn't really a sexy car at all. Yeah. Um, but it is fun to drive. I find it fun to drive. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a nice, you know, tight turning and, and stuff like that. So I enjoy driving it. And we kind of did the, the Tesla stretch was the Prius stretch back in uh, 2008. And it was just kind of like, I really want to go this direction. Again, you know, the EV1 had been crushed at that point there didn't mm -hmm. seem to be anything on the horizon but uh you know honda had the insight mm -hmm. and uh toyota had the prius and so i went to the the auto show sat in both of them the prius seemed a little bigger a little more useful um so we ended up finding one that had been a rental car and we got a terrible deal on it because oh, no. everyone wanted one <laughs> at the time. We're like the worst at finding tax credits or, or <laughs> anything, you know, if we can miss a tax credit, we're there. <laughs> um, yeah. We, uh, we missed it on the Prius, missed it oh. on the used uh, uh, 2015 model S because it yeah. was used. Yeah. The Prius that's right. was also used. So we didn't get that. Yeah. And then by the time we bought our Model Y, Tesla was out of their tax credit. So we're just, <laughs> we can weave our way right through those, uh, much to our pocketbook chagrin. But, uh, but uh, yeah. So again, you know, like I said, you know, we were so excited of like, you know, getting the Prius and like it seemed like, again, magical technology. 
and you'd have the engine shut off and you'd just be driving on the electric and parking lots and stuff. I'm like, oh man, if this thing only had a plug and we could just, you know, do that for 10 or 20 miles. That was even before the Prius Prime, I think, Mm -hmm. or before I knew about the Prius Prime. And so, yeah, that was kind of my dream of like, okay, now let's get to that plug-in hybrid next step because I could do most of my day on electric. Yeah. And, you know, then, you know, by the time, by the time I was really in a position that we could maybe get something else, like Tesla was in the news and I kind of knew about it, but we still have the, the Prius with uh, 223,000 miles on it. Wow. And that thing <laughs> just won't die. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which well, which is good. good for, yeah, I was going to say for a 2008, that that amount of mileage, I would say is pretty realistic for, what was it, 14 years? 14 years? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Math was not my forte, so I'm pretty yeah. proud I got that. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but yeah. well, I had to think through it too, and I'm down here <laughs> doing my fingers. Like, yeah. Don't let them see I'm counting. Yeah, see, this is this is where we need Alex back, the engineer. Right. You know, his, right. Yeah. <laughs> That, so so really you you went directly from a um a hybrid an HEV a hybrid electric vehicle directly into a battery electric vehicle yep. did, did, was there any plan to potentially like maybe try a plug-in hybrid or um not really well you know I heard about the Prius prime but mm-hmm. it's like we're still paying off our our Prius yeah. um we had another vehicle that was all gas and and really, when we bought the Prius, you know, everybody was like, oh, what are you going to do when the battery runs out or, you know, battery dies and you have to replace it? How expensive is it going to be? Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing that hasn't we haven't had problems with <laughs> over the years. Mm-hmm. You know, over that many miles, you're going to have problems with any car. But the battery system has been perfect on that. Mm-hmm. And um, so when we bought the Prius, the thought was, well, we'll always have a gas car. And then our other cars will always be hybrid. And then when we bought the Tesla, it was, you know, well, we're going to always have a hybrid just to be safe. But, you know, we'll do most of our driving with the battery electric vehicle. And then about a month after owning it, I'm like, nope, we're going all electric. (laughs) We can do this. No problem. (laughs) <laughs> but you have to, you kind of have to have that experience, you know, to know that it's, it's going to work. You mm-hmm. know, there's a, you know, people kind of wonder like, why doesn't everybody just get on board? Well, you've been driving this way all your life, you know, and, you know, changing something that fundamental to what you do every day yeah. is a big leap. And, you know, it's a big ask to get people to, to take that leap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and, you know, that, that's actually a good transition point into your, your YouTube videos. Uh, because one, th- one thing that I love about your YouTube videos is, as you mentioned earlier, you demonstrate how the vehicle works in multiple arrays of situations. And the, the one I want to get to is obviously the one where you slept in your car <laughs> in, you know, extremely cold temperatures to, to prove a point that the vehicle can hold its charge. Um, and, you know, kind of um, dismiss all that, uh, the worries and fears that the media was spreading in terms of electric vehicles. Um, but before we get to that, I, I would love to know, Brian, um, you know, with your with your background of art and cinematography and starting your YouTube channel in 2011, um, what was your original goal with, uh, with content production? Well, originally I was kind of, um, I, I went to school for art and theater and I was working at an event production company um, and doing a lot of scenery builds and, uh, you know, entrances for or stage pieces for corporate events or, you know, productions like that. And um, it it was okay, but it wasn't, you know, kind of the more fine art fulfilling thing. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to, if I start a YouTube channel, and just paint, that will be, you know, that kind of creative outlet. And if I do a YouTube channel, it'll keep me doing it. And so for a while, 
uh, I was doing that. And then in 2013, we had our, our daughter and uh, she had some special needs and any parent special needs or not, um, some of those hobbies end up dropping off. Mm -hmm. And so the channel really sat stagnant for a while. And occasionally I do a painting or something and, and put it up there. Um, but it just was kind of something out there and I wasn't using. Um, again, so when I had the idea of doing the supercharger reviews, I'm like, I have a channel that's not doing anything anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I may as well you know, post these up there and, and put them on the super supercharger review page. Um, and so now that my daughter's a little older, occasionally I'll do a, a painting project and things, but uh, I've now separated that out into another channel because my main channel is all EV stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's one thing I found very quickly when it came to content production is if you find a niche, have a channel solely around that. <laughs> yeah, <I'd, laughs> yeah. I was trying to do like these little short uh, snippets of like little comedy bits or like social commentary things. Yeah. And the EV stuff. I did that for about a year. And I was like, why is the channel not doing anything? You know, people like my EV stuff. But the way YouTube works is you do one thing on your channel and nothing else. And yep. Start a new channel for the other thing. And it only took me a year of butting my head against the wall to realize that. <laughs> I, I think we've all been there. Trust me. I, I actually I have a, a bookshelf on this other side uh, next to me full of like YouTube secret books and like talking about the algorithm. And like, I, I feel like I've done more studying about the YouTube algorithm than I ever did in college. Like. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure yeah. out what to do with that and how to get it to, you know, jumpstart your content. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And I, there's a lot of things like I kind of knew in the back of my head, but didn't mm -hmm. really take learning it seriously until about the last year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I started watching more videos and, you know, people explaining like only do one thing on your channel, idiot. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> Oh, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I wouldn't watch a channel that had eight different things going on. Yeah. Why would anyone watch this? So, yeah. um, but the, making those changes has helped still working on it, but yeah, well, hey, you know, the, the main thing is that you're still working on it and it's been exciting to watch your channel grow. You know, the one thing that like, I, I love about your channel is, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like you demonstrate how these vehicles can work and you really challenge these cars too to prove a point. Um, and, you know, the, the one video I would love to talk about and highlight here is, um, you know, background a few weeks ago, there was a big traffic jam, I believe, in uh, Virginia. Yep. Um, there was a, a, a weather or a winter weather event that caused a massive traffic jam. And uh, there was a lot of misconceptions that an electric vehicle was, you know, dead and it caused all these issues. And that was not the case. Um, but my favorite thing about that whole thing is that, you know, on Twitter, everybody really came together to produce content to demonstrate that that was not true and that these vehicles are actually fantastic um, in the in the winter. Um, but the one thing that I do want to say that struck me about your video is that a lot of the other videos, they maintained monitoring the app from either inside their house or not inside the car. <laughs> so I, I would love to talk about your video. W were you just like, like dead set on spending the night in the car? Like, <laughs> you know, I line? wish, I wish it was something like that. Um, I'm going to admit something super stupid. And that is <laughs> it never occurred to me to not spend the night in the car. I love that though. Like that and, to me, that's dedication. And then when I saw other people, <laughs> Like the morning, I think uh, Chris from Dirty Tesla mm -hmm. posted his, like the morning as I'm sitting in the car, just killing time. Yeah. You know, he posted his video and I'm like, oh, he just set it to go yeah. and like took notes from inside his house where he could be with his family and warm. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I did... I, I technically, you know, as I'm getting ready, I'm like, do I really want to do this? There's easier ways. Um, but, you know, I kind of wanted the experience of, you know, do I need to turn the heat up? Am mm -hmm. I getting too uncomfortable? I also didn't put anything else in the car. You know, I, I have a cold weather sleeping bag. 
I easily could have put that in there and like, oh, you know, I can turn the car off and I'll probably be fine. It was 14 below, so I wouldn't have done that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like, okay, whatever's in the car right now is what I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did have like a winter jacket that was in there for emergencies. And so I had the jacket I was wearing and then I kind of laid that over my legs and, you know, just to keep a little warmer, keep the, the temp lower in the car, use the seat heaters, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I was trying to think through the thought process of someone in that situation where you get stuck and you think, oh man, I'm going to be here like a half an hour. And so, you know, like with the Tesla, they have the arcade games or the, you know, uh, video games in there. So I was like, well, I would think I'm going to kill some time. I'm going to watch some, you know, Netflix or something, play some games. And, you know, that probably doesn't burn a lot of juice, but I thought, you know, that's the kind of thing. But then like after the hour mark and nothing's moving, you're probably thinking, okay, time to conserve. And so yeah. I kind of did that, that step down as if I were more in that situation. So um, I wanted it to be a pretty realistic test, although obviously 14 below zero Fahrenheit is much colder than the, uh, you know, 20 or, you know, 30 degree temperatures they had in Virginia. But, mm -hmm. you know, that could happen in Minnesota. But yeah. Yeah. Um, we do have, and, and you guys probably have in Ohio too, uh, better um, utility um, uh, government assets mm -hmm. that can plow and tow and are used to situations like that. So the chances of it being a multi-day you know, ordeal like Virginia is is less likely up here, even though we get more snow and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say that that is one perk of Cleveland is that they are pretty prepared <laughs> for winter yeah. storms. Sadly, not where I live in Cleveland, but the rest of the city. I feel like our street always remains on plowed. But <laughs> yeah, we're on a dead end, so we have oh. uh, we watch you know everything get plowed around us, and then <laughs> eventually, sometime they come down our street. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of working from home, though. Yes, and yes, you don't have to go anywhere. Go. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, you know, I will say, Brian, that that was one. Um, your video was actually probably my favorite out of everybody's. Oh, thank um, you. Just, just because, like, from a realistic approach, you know, just kind of replicating what could have happened to those people in Virginia. Um, I actually think I remember reading a um, a news article about someone in a Tesla who yeah. um, who survived that. And um, at the at the time the traffic started moving, I think his car was only down to about thirty to forty percent state of charge from the night before. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the fact that like you were actually out there in negative 14 degree weather and living through that, that that's what impressed me most about your video. Um, <laughs> I thought I, I will say I, as much as I tweeted about that, that I wanted to do a test like that, but our bolt and our ID four doesn't have anything similar to like camp mode or any way to really maintain the vehicle to stay on. And um, if I had to spend more than 10 hours in my Bolt's uh, seats, I, I wouldn't be a very happy camper. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, I don't know that I've ever actually driven a Bolt, but I've, I've heard that's that's the kind of the downside is the seats. Yes, yeah, I, I will say that that car is a, like a hot hatch. Like I, I love autocross and I love like, um, for example, like the Volkswagen Golf, like GTI, like I love those small high performance hatchbacks. And that car is just like that, but the seats are like sitting on a yard seat for yeah they're not <laughs> they're not very comfortable yeah that's the new tough. ones are but not 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 mine <laughs> but um yeah sorry brian Go ahead. oh i was just gonna say I, I forgot to mention this earlier but you did say uh you know kind of the whole twitter community mm -hmm. uh of ev fans you know did really rally and that was so cool to see of like and it wasn't like you know there were some non EV owners going, why is there this weird competition going on? And it was like, it's not a competition. It's data points of you think it can't work here. You know, it, it can work here in Michigan in Ohio in Virginia. And uh, I think EV Dave was doing his in North Carolina or South Carolina. And 
you know, it, it was just a, a cool moment of everyone getting together and going, Hey, here's what I got. Here's what I got. Yeah. And yeah, it was a great moment. Mm -hmm. I, I think what blew my mind is how quickly everybody came together to produce those videos. Yeah. Um, especially Chris from dirty Tesla. I couldn't believe how fast his video came out. Um, I, I almost was like, I have to step up my production game <laughs> because everybody was like, you blinked and there was a new video. Out. <laughs> it was, it was really impressive with how quickly people put that information out there. But I, I think it is important because at that time it was a hot topic D did an electric car cause that. And, um, I, I love proving a point and it was really cool seeing everybody do that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I did see a couple of people post that like, well, Bjorn Nyland uh, did this in, in Norway like mm -hmm. last year and proved that you could do it. And it's like, yeah, Bjorn is great. You know, his videos are fantastic. His tests are fantastic, mm -hmm. but nobody watches videos from a year ago. You, you yeah. know, like, uh, yeah. you know, YouTube kind of feeds on the, the new thing or the trend mm -hmm. thing. And so the fact that a bunch of people did this and it was kind of a hot topic of conversation, you know, it brought a lot of those up and, you know, I, I tried posting or linking to Bjorn's video too, because it's great, but mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of the, 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 the freshest gravy yeah. is what gets used. That, that's a terrible metaphor. <laughs> I, I know I knew what you meant. Yeah. But now now I'm gonna just picture videos older than a year like as like old gravy. Yeah, you gotta you know, <laughs> yeah, freshen you the gravy, up. stir yeah. it up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I was a big fan of, um, well, I am still a big fan of Bjorn's video um, when videos when I worked for Tesla. Like, he was always, like, that one YouTuber that I watched besides Cayman, Cayman Auto. Um, oh, yeah. I, I'm not exactly sure if he's still producing videos, but um, Yeah, I haven't Bjorn's, seen anything from him for a while, but. Yeah, yeah. he's. I think he's from the same area, right? Is he from Minnesota? He might be. It's been, it's been a while since I've seen him so i don't know if he's still producing but it, yeah i feel like there was some connection or like he's not too far away yeah um, yeah but i don't remember the last video i've seen from him yeah I something to look up after we're done here. yes yes yeah the the old gravy maybe new gravy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know it, it's um it, it's impressive because i i agree with you you know a lot of people are looking for that new content because especially in evs technology is always improving and um, even though at the time Bjorn's video is, you know, was relevant and it is still relevant to, you know, to an extent, technology could have changed. And, you mm -hmm. know, the the newer vehicles out there now, you know, like all this, um, like the Ionic 5, the EV6 and all these um, non-Tesla electric vehicles that are coming to market, um, it just opens up the opportunity to do new testing and, you know, yeah. show that data, those data points. <laughs> yeah, I just, um, I, I mentioned the... Uh the uh polestar 2 video and the the um, volvo xc40 recharge video while we were doing that i got to see my first uh kia ev6 oh, in nice. person nice and it looks so cool in person yeah. um i i'm i i love the fact that hyundai did the ionic 5 and chose some crazy styling but I don't care for it. <laughs> um, like I, I love bold choices like that. It's really mm -hmm. cool. And Kia kind of did their own thing and it's different. And that one hits me just right as yeah. far as looks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the owner of it had only had it four days. And I'm like, okay, once you've had it for like a month, we got to talk <laughs> and I want to do a video interview you and everything. And uh, yeah, because I, I think that's just, um, well, really all three of those are very good EVs. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so cool that there are other good options for people, you know, being a Tesla owner, you kind of get labeled the fanboy sycophant that, you know, you only love Teslas. And I, I do love my Tesla. I'm not trading my model YN, mm -hmm. but you know, I've got, uh, uh, friends with ID fours that love them. Um, well, you know, uh, Brandon and Kaylee, the mm -hmm. EV nomads, and yep. um, uh, he was one of the first Tesla owners I knew up here in Minnesota. Um, and now he's moved on to the ID4 and loves it. 
Uh-huh. Um, and I have another friend who just got one and it's like, great. Everybody get into EVs however you want. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Like, I think it's fantastic now that there is a market for non-Tesla EVs and really, really good vehicles. Um, yeah. You know, we, we really, we really like our ID4 and, you know, I know the Bolt definitely does get some, um, trying to think of a nice way to say it uh it definitely gets labeled in a bad way but mm-hmm. even that has its offerings um lots of pros to the to the vehicle itself yeah um, a it, lot of people i know who have them just love them other than yeah. maybe the seats but yes but other than yeah. that <laughs> um, yes you know and as, as the battery replacement thing seems to be going smoothly mm-hmm. um you know i'm sure everybody wants it faster but you know some people are getting it have got it already and you know, that's good. You get a new battery, a little more range, new warranty. Yep. You know, that's a, a good deal. Yep. I agree. Yeah. We're actually, um, you know, since I, I, I'm pretty vocal about it on Twitter, talking about our Chevy Bolt buyback that we're going through, um, we should hopefully have an offer in the next week or two, and the vehicle oh. should be returned soon. Um, but we are looking at the EV6 and the Ionic 5 as possible replacements. Um, I saw the EV6 in person in November at the Seattle Auto Show and um, didn't get a chance to drive it or sit in it, but we're driving one next weekend. Um, oh, nice. Yes. And uh, we're driving the Model 3 and Model Y tomorrow morning. Um, so we're, okay. uh, we're, we're testing everything in the water at the moment. But <laughs> Yeah, that's good to do. You know, and, and yeah. the nice thing is that there's such a variety of size, too, mm-hmm. um, that, you know, you can find the right fit for you and, you know, how much space you have in your garage or whatever your charging parking situation is. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really surprised. I, I think of the Model Y as being pretty small. Mm-hmm. And then I parked it next to the Volvo XC40 Recharge, and it's about a foot longer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the recharge is about as tall, mm-hmm. maybe even a hair taller. Um, but, you know, that shape, uh, my my uh, sister drives Volvo products, uh, loves the big SUV <laughs> Volvos. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, she could get into this and feel perfectly at home <laughs> and have a lot more acceleration because it's pretty quick. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just it's cool that the right fit for the right person is, is out there now. Yep. I agree. And, and I agree with you about everything you said about the EV six. Like I, I like how the Ionic five looks and that's definitely up there on our list, but based on sportiness and styling, the EV six takes it for me. Um, we just have to, we have to find one in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that That's kind of, so, that is the tough part in the Midwest is mm-hmm. availability. Yep. Um, but there, when you, have you seen it in person? Yeah. You said you saw it in person, but haven't had a chance to sit in there and drive it. Yeah. Um, yeah. there's so many little cool styling details, uh, around the back. There's this diamond pattern that's 3d that wouldn't have to be, but it's this silver strip along the back edge. And it's like, to me, you know, that like people love the crease of the, uh, of the ionic five yeah and i don't like the crease i like this thing so you know each one of them has their thing for the right person yeah no i i agree and and that's one thing i love what hyundai and kia did like yeah it's based on the same platform but they went in totally separate directions with with aesthetics and performance and all those different um characteristics yeah i'm i'm pretty excited about driving the ev6 that's definitely one especially after the super bowl with that cute uh, commercial they did with the puppy yep. <laughs> with the robo puppy <laughs> yeah that, well that's what i when i met this gal i, I said you know where's your robot dog should we charge it up because <laughs> right. she was demonstrating like charging another vehicle mm-hmm. she has that cord and i'm like you need the robot oh, dog cool. she's like i want one so bad yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like kia needs to produce those because I, yeah. I i genuinely feel like people would jump on that i would jump on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Brian, I was curious, you know, to circle back to your content production and, you know, with your with your professional background with with working with cinematography and video editing, um, where do you see yourself going with your YouTube channel? Well, that's, that's a really good question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know that you know I did professional video 
from my YouTube videos um, because, you know, I, I'm a one man band, you know, be, because I have that editing background, you know, I'm not going to hire an editor and, you know, I'm shooting a lot of this stuff myself. So um, I would like to bring more, you know, more production value. Uh, but also, you know, there's, a, there's a place for that, but I see more value in, in what I can offer, like the, the test drive video I'm going to um, release about the Polestar and, and the, mm-hmm. um, I'm not the most technical person in the world. And for the most part, I don't care about that stuff. You know, when you got in your gas car, you didn't say, let, let me get, you know, six apps out and, you know, you got in the car, you drove, if you love to road trip like I did, you just hit the road, you know, maybe plan out your route, but you go. And I, I kind of want to show that there are all these fantastic tools out there, but also the average person can get in these cars and go. And so when I was doing these test drives and just finished editing it today and I'm like, Oh, I just kind of got in and didn't change settings and, you know, go through all the menus. I just kind of got in and drove it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, some people would say, well, that's not really a, a review, but it's what I think a lot of people want out of their vehicle is, can I get in this thing, however it is, mm-hmm. turn it on, or, you know, you don't have to turn these on, but, you know, get in, put it in reverse, pull out and go. And, so that's kind of my my take on on things is how is the average person going to react you know you can get into the minutia but i try not to have videos get too long Mm -hmm. um and then in the future i want to do more interviews with uh the some of the videos that have, have worked best for me have been interviewing real owners after they've had something for a month or a year or something and, you know, kind of get past that initial, it's amazing, but I don't know anything about it phase to, you know, yeah, we tried to drive up to the cabin and, you know, we had some problems or had to do this or it's fantastic and it can do so much more than I thought. Um, because living with them day to day, you learn so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get more people um, to kind of give those perspectives, you know, because that's a, you know, when I was buying our, our Tesla, it was watch all the videos you can on people who really own the Model S or really own the Model 3. And mm-hmm. which one are we going to go with? And I feel like that's pretty helpful, especially if it can be sincere and not salesy. Yeah. Um, That's why like, I'd love to up my production value, but there's something about not being too slick, you know, where it can come off authentic is important too. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot more time and effort. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> this is true yeah. there's there's that part of it to be honest but yeah uh, no i i i agree with you i i think that there is definitely something that resonates with everyday you know viewers and everyday drivers um when it comes to almost like that home style video and presenting information without sugarcoating it um because i mean at the end of the day i i'm a firm believer that no vehicle if it's gas or electric is perfect you know all vehicles have their flaws all vehicles have their pros um but to present an info like information in a way that somebody who is you know simply just trying to get down the street or go somewhere you know really simple they can digest that information and feel confident getting into an ev i think that's a smart approach and and i think that that's why we're seeing a lot of channels that take that approach in terms of production doing really, you know, successful things with their content. Yeah. And and it's really eye opening for me because I do this and I'm sure you get this too, is people ask you questions about cars you don't own. Mm -hmm. But if I can sit down for an hour with uh, a Mach-E driver, which I did about a month ago or so, maybe, maybe two now (laughs) time goes fast. Oh, I get Um, that. (laughs) But you know, 
we just kind of had a, a conversation about what it's like to live with and mm. what what would, does he wish they'd fix with software or what are his concerns about, you know, I, I want to, you know, trailer my pontoon and, you know, I think I can do it, but, you know, I'll check back with you in the spring and see how it goes. And yeah, just those real, what are the things on the minds of people who are really driving it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, that, that actually leads to my, to my last question. I, I believe it or not, we're actually 51 minutes into our conversation, which I is told you to I could ramble. <laughs> no, you're good. It, it always amazes me at how fast uh, episodes go by. Um, so I, I know, um, and correct me if I'm wrong with the timing, but you have a, a live stream called everybody, everyone's an expert and that's every Wednesday. Is that correct? Every Wednesday? It, yeah. It's, it's generally been every Wednesday. I'm working on changing the name. Okay. It grew out of, uh, really frustration out of all the FUD that was out there mm -hmm. and you would read, well, kind of the, the situation in Virginia is a perfect example of that where someone makes a broad assumption without any experience with EVs and thinks they just know everything. Mm -hmm. And it's so frustrating to, you know, a lot of articles I'll click on uh, just to see what the comments are. Because, you know, it might be a story that if you're knee deep in this world, you already know all the details of it. Mm -hmm. But you want to see how people are reacting. I do that a lot. And it's probably not a smart idea. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah. for mental calm anyway yeah i get um, into the weeds too i get that <laughs> yeah and yeah. you know you start reading this and it's like oh what are you gonna do when the battery dies what do you, you know mm -hmm. have you heard about you know where's that electricity coming from and you know like these old things that it's like oh you must be the first person who's ever thought of that um so it kind of grew out of like the frustration and i think a couple of the early episodes, I was actually reading comments and just like, no, this is stupid because, you know, X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of, it's kind of grown into more of a, a hangout and just kind of answering questions, kind of talking about what's going on, you know, that week with, you know, we've had so many product reveals and like, the Super Bowl ads last week yeah. and, uh, you know, just kind of what's going on. And then if people join in the chat, you know, answering questions as best I can. And kind of the thought of the everyone's an expert is when you have a lot of EV owners in a chat, you know, new owners would come in there and say, I'm having a problem with this or I don't know this. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't know, someone in the chat would answer or at least be able to point to a resource. And so that was kind of the initial thought. I'm, I'm working on kind of changing the name of it to more like the electric car hangout or something. Yeah. Uh, because everyone's an expert doesn't really, you know, what, what is that? <laughs> it could be about anything. Um, so again, trying to, you know, work the YouTube Rubik's cube a little better, you mm -hmm. know, being very direct of like, this is what this is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I've been doing that and, uh, uh, some of them get pretty long and like I said, I love to ramble, but you know, it, it, what's most fun for me is when there is good questions and dialogue mm -hmm. and, you know, even if people are disagreeing, everybody is generally pretty cool and, you know, laid back, um, you know, kind of the living room rules. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so it, it, it's fun, but yeah. Yeah. It, it, I don't know if I don't know if it's going to be every week. Uh, like next week, I'll be in in Florida mm -hmm. um, on vacation with my family. I'd love to do it, especially if we have a balcony over the beach. I can make everyone jealous. Well, yeah, oh. right. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it's not going to be you know like exactly every week, but it it mostly is. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's a great, um, it's a great live stream idea to get people involved and get the community involved to answer questions. Um, if, if somebody, you know, like if one of our listeners wants to participate, can anybody join in on that or do, should they reach out to you first? Um, well, yeah, it's just a live stream. So uh, unfortunately right now it's just me, you know, for the most part, I've done a couple things where I've had 
uh, guests on. And speaking of which, I'd love to have you and Alex on yeah. either at the same time or at another time or, yeah. you know, like whenever it works out um, on there to just kind of do this in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would love I can to grill you for an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I can talk for an hour. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, so I've done a couple, of, um, a couple of them like that, uh, for the new year, I just hit a thousand subscribers on my channel. Congrats. And so it was kind of like a, thank you. Um, and it, it's growing well now since then too. So, uh, but you know, that kind of happened right before the new year and that was my big goal for the year. And so it wasn't a live stream, but we did a, a zoom call with anyone who wanted to join. And it was just, yeah, kind of a hangout. And, you know, we talked about stuff, but then everybody was able to chime in. So um, working on adding guests and doing doing that stuff, but it's it's a work in progress. Yep. Yeah, t trust me. I, I know with live streams, it's very different from getting a video edited and putting it out there. There's a lot of things that can go right and a lot of things that can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yes there are there have yep. been embarrassing moments <laughs> where everyone's texting me but i'm not looking at my phone yeah and they're like you've been on mute for five minutes oh, oh. No. <laughs> yeah. it's all the, it's all part of the journey that, that's yeah. how you gotta look at it <laughs> yeah well brian as as we wrap up um i i want to make sure that our listeners know where to find you on social media as well as your youtube channel can you can you give a, a shout out with where they can find you uh, yeah, on, on Twitter, it's just Brian underscore Reby, and Brian is with an I, and Reby is R-I-E-B-E. -E. And YouTube is Brian Reby Drives Electric. Awesome. Yeah, definitely check out Brian's content. Um, you know, I've been, I, well, we've been connected on Twitter for a while now. Yeah. And it's it's been fun watching your videos, so I'm, I'm excited to see what you do next with your Model Y. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, tomorrow morning, we're uh, after I we sign off uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., my daughter and I are leaving on another road trip uh, to go to Florida. And so that will be, uh, I think we're taking uh, four days to drive down there, stop and see the sights and everything along the way. And then uh, some time at Cocoa Beach. If the Starlink launch gets delayed, we might be able to see that. Yeah. Hoping for that. I'm sure they aren't, but yeah, <laughs> um, that'd be incredible to see though. But th yeah, then, then that'll be a, a whole road trip series of videos too. Cause weird stuff happens on the road, yep. <laughs> especially when you're traveling with a child, it can get crazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, we'll definitely keep an eye out for those videos and thank you, Brian, for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. I look forward to having you on my channel as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm going to try to do an outro. Uh, Alex typically does this too. So, <laughs> well, everybody, thank you guys again for listening to Living Electric. If you want to find us on Twitter, it's at Living Electric underscore, um, as well as on Facebook at Living Electric Podcast. And you can find us at YouTube under the same name. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in the next episode.